So, <laughs> you know, I mean, it's so it's so cool because I turned three in November of 1990 and at the 1990 Survivor Series. And obviously, you know, we all know who debuted on that, The Undertaker. And I don't know, I, you know, it was just kind of, um, I don't know, I never been so enthralled in a, in a character like The Undertaker before. And it's, you know, I mean, a lot of people were cheering Hulk Hogan, Randy Savage. I was too. But my all time favorite, The Undertaker. So. Yeah, yeah, man. Well, listen, while we're on the topic, so obviously if you're a big fan of The Undertakers, um, we all know that The Last Ride, uh, Episode 5, debuted yesterday. I mean, I was right on it as soon as it dropped 10 o'clock in the morning, and I know a lot of other people were as well. Now me, I fast-forwarded all the way to the end (laughs) because I can't wait for spoilers and stuff like that, so I went all the way to the end. Watched the last six minutes first and then backed up. And and so I kind of got the news ahead of time and then went back and watched it. So um, what have you thought of that series? Being a longtime fan, it must have been cool to see, you know, this all come to the forefront because he was not the, the type of guy who did this kind of thing ever. Um, he played he played that character so well. He was always in kayfabe. Um, what did you think of this whole documentary, seeing this inside look at this character? And then, of course, what did you think of the ending, um, where it left us? And, and do you think that he's really finished? All right. Um, well, the first time that I seen it, the first episode, and they were talking about uh, tw- um, April or March to April 2017. And I was like, I was like, wait a minute. And all of a sudden it brought back to WrestleMania 33. I'm like, oh my God, I was actually there watching that happen. And I, I had no idea that he was even, you know, even thinking of retiring, but anyways, we'll get to my WrestleMania story later on in the show. But anyways, yeah, yeah. yeah, watching this with the undertaker, I mean, you hardly ever heard anything about him, about the man behind the character. You know, I mean, like, like you said, he kept kayfabe for so many years, but you know, I mean, just seeing this going behind the scenes, the man behind the character, I I could see why they they kept it. You know, why he never decided to do it for so long. But it's just like, wow, you know what? This guy's actually pretty cool. And and watching all the chapters together, you could tell that he really has that love for the business, and he wants to do what he can to protect it as much as he can, and help the young guys, obviously. And just oh my god, just so so many things that happened, all the matches he did. And it's just like, holy crap. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, yeah. Seeing that show really opened up a lot of, uh, a lot of things and, you know, hearing the people talk about him um, as if he's this legend that is, you know, walking amongst them and, and all of the, you know, looking up to him, like I think they mentioned yesterday, like he was the godfather of, of, of wrestling to all them. And, and then I think yesterday also in that episode, seeing him in NXT and, you know, sitting in the room with the with the guys from NXT and talking to them and, and kind of passing on his knowledge, um, you know, look, it's something you may not always see from everybody. Um, I know there's legends in the game that have come and gone, but, you know, I, I think that he just, it just seems like everybody just looks up to him. You don't really hear about too many people not liking um, Undertaker slash Mark Calloway. So it's, uh, again, yeah, I mean, it was, it was a really good series, I think, and, and, and brought a really good, um, um, sight into what his life was like. And it also apparently helped him as well, because I guess all through this, he said it kind of helped him come to the realization, um, of what he came to yesterday at the end of the show. So we heard his comments obviously at the end and we heard him say, you know, this is it. I, I think I can really walk away. Um, well, first of all, did you did you see the um, did you see the last the cinematic match? Did you see the Boneyard match at WrestleMania? Yes, yes, I did. Um, I actually was when I actually heard that they were still doing WrestleMania 36 from the performance there, and, I, and it, it actually got me intrigued. I was just like, there is no way they can actually do that and still keep some sort of like WrestleMania esque. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. But 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 they actually proved proved that they actually could do it, and of course the cinematic match, obviously the boneyard match, the main event for the first uh, the first night. I I saw that, and actually, in my opinion, for that, I think that he actually, if he wanted to, if the Undertaker wanted to leave doing doing something that 
he can actually look at it and go, you know what, I'm very proud of that. I don't have to get back in the ring anymore. That match, that Boneyard match with AJ Styles was the match, I think. Yeah. Yeah, I agree. I, and now seeing yesterday's show and, and leading up to it, um, you you got that feeling that, you know, what they came up with and everything like that. And seeing what seeing what we saw, um, kind of turning this little tiny plot of land that they got into what they did. Uh, it was almost amazing uh, to see. And, and look, I, I don't think you can get any better way. And I know my, my co-host Jeff has said this. Uh, he called this a, a, you know, a while ago and said, I think he's going to announce that this is his final match. Um, after And this was after we watched the Boneyard match. So what better way to go out? I mean, than to go out with your fist held in the air, riding off into the sunset on a bike, you know, the logo lit up in the background, you know, and for him being such a perfectionist, knowing that if something were to happen in another match, let's say he chose to wrestle again. Now everybody's saying Survivor Series because this is going to be his 30th anniversary of Survivor Series where he debuted. So everybody's saying, well, he's going to wrestle there. But look, being such a perfectionist, if he goes out there and does that, and let's say, who knows, let's say something happens that, you know, he doesn't like, and then the whole vicious cycle kind of starts up again where he doesn't feel like he he left it on a high note. So I agree with you. I, I think that you, I don't think you can go out any better way. Yeah, I mean, and I when I was actually watching the, uh, the chapter five, they were talking about that, and Triple H, I, I read on some uh, some news was talking about, you know, pro- the production of it, and he said, you know what, if if Mark wants to retire, you know, Mark Calloway, if he wants to retire, we gotta make sure that this looks looks good for him. And him and AJ Styles just beat the living crap out of each other. And I mean, with AJ Styles, I mean, I watched him in uh, I, I I watched him since Impact Wrestling, you know, TNA, and. I, I loved how, how a perfectionist he was, too, when he was in the rain. You, you know, the phenomenal forearm, the styles clash, all that good stuff. And it's just, you know, it's it's like, what better way to go out than have somebody like AJ Styles? I mean, he, can, he, had, a, he had a perfect match with Shane McMahon that... I- 